What's up everybody? I'm back with another video. This video is going to be looking at why asymmetries are so important and we're going to be focusing on in possession of the ball and focusing on the wide area and the half spaces. So before we start, check out my book. It's up online on Amazon. There's a link in the description below. So be sure to check that out. And the next one's coming out the end of next week probably or even as soon as this weekend so be on the lookout for that as well and let's get right into it so when we talk about asymmetries typically we cut the field directly in half and refer to each side as one and then if you would just fold the field then if the players don't line up or in their general positions um, we refer to this as asymmetry and we can have numerical asymmetry positional asymmetry and things of that sort so this is where overloads and isolations come into play we can refer to that as numerical asymmetry or positional asymmetry as we see here where the 10 is occupying the half space between the lines and the half space between the lines on one side is vacated so let's get right into it as we see the first piece of asymmetry here is the wide areas so in the wide areas on the left side we're going with double width and then on the weak side we're going with single width so that's the first form of asymmetry the next is the use of the half space between the lines so we have one advanced midfielder and then a vacated half space on the other side so then from here we have a bit of symmetry with our back three but how the back three is created has asymmetric movements involved because on one side we have our fullback creating the back three he often rotates from the right sided wide area a bit higher up the field and then slots in as a third central defender whereas the left fullback plays more typically as a fullback you'd expect but we can even change this to then show a little asymmetry in our first line of buildup. And so just by staggering our players a little bit, we start to see some positional asymmetry. So we have three central defenders or three players in the first line of buildup, but the positions they occupy are very different. So we have half space, central corridor, now the wide area. And we can, we can show a few interactions on why this might be important. So if ball gets circulated, Oftentimes the reference point for the wide midfielder is the wide fullback to go and press. So first off, the distance this player has to go increases very much just based on the asymmetric positioning. So not only does he have to travel further, but the connection then becomes weaker. So if the player, the number eight, plays more man-oriented, maybe puts his cover shadow, there'll be a huge disconnect between the wide midfielder and then his supporting central midfielder and then we can continue on with the shifting so now we start to see a bit of a break in their defensive setup so this space can then be be utilized and now if the fullback then goes we can even shift over a little bit further to make it a, a little more realistic so with good vertical compactness the space between the line is scarce but the full fullback can't quite jump yet because of the threat of the 10 to run in behind and concede space. So he might cheat a little. And this gap here is what then the teams would try and exploit when they are in possession of the ball. So this could be through a third man movement or maybe a holding midfielder checking. And then you can find the wide area and create a 2v1 versus the fullback and, or create some route of progression to further manipulate the defense but that's just one way now we can look at why a team would use asymmetry in the wide areas so the biggest form of asymmetry often comes from single width and double width so if we circulate the ball when playing with double width pretty typical the fullback will go the wide midfielder will go support in the half space holding down the 10 area and the center backs will shift across for cover. So from here, not too many questions asked in terms of the shape. Everyone will have their role 
and it'll be pretty straightforward. But now when the team circulates possession again, they'll have to defend this side very different than they did this side because now there's occupation in the half space, single width now, and a deep lying playmaker. So as the ball goes, the wide midfielder, as we talked about before, increased distance would have to shift. Fullback would then have to go, and now they would have to use some sort of marking strategy to then take care of the player in the half space, whether that be man orientation, conceding space in front of the block, or if they're more spatially oriented, worrying about the connections between their players, now there's space between the lines to then exploit. So depending on how the team prioritizes their shifting and how they control space between the lines, this can be very different. And not only this, is the biggest difference is the shifting principle. So they'll have to defend this left side of the blue team's attack. Very different from how they'll defend this right side. So either way, you're eliciting different responses from the defensive team. So forcing them into more complex movement and to deal with different problems that your offensive attack is causing them. So these are all ways they can make mistakes and often when you do have these more complex movements from the team in the, their defensive phase, you often get mistakes when they have to defend in multiple different ways across the field. So this isn't, these aren't the only forms of asymmetry, but these are the ones I wanted to cover today. So as a little introductory vi video to asymmetries, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.